hate you, I hate you, I don't even know you, and I hate your guts. Yeah, I I was talking to the homies last night, and I was like, dude, I need to start toking up for no reason, because I miss those days, man. I think it was fun. Yeah, I might just do it mid-cast. Let me get this yeah, bowl like, on deck. I'm wildly uninterested in doing it to party, but like the middle of the day, for no goddamn reason, sounds great. Dude, it made me want to watch movies again. I was I stoked the other night. Yeah, like I really want to have that feeling, too, because watching movies drunks either makes you real emotional or not pay attention at all yeah i don't know like last night i accidentally got way too drunk because i was watching breakfast at tiffany's alone (laughs) and now i'm a little hungover i just utilized that pop filter yeah i heard it you sprayed all over it yeah yeah if if anything really the pop filters to protect the mic from the shit spewing from your mouth it doesn't like actually affect the sound at all (laughs) Is that the words I'm saying, or uh, no, no, no? More just like the liquids coming out whenever you spew. The words that I say, (laughs) the shit that you spew. (laughs) Well, I guess we can use this conversation as a segue into talking about all those Tarantino movies that we watched the other day. Dude, we watched so many. We watched two more than I've seen in the last six months. Yeah, and they. That was a good night. It was, dude. So the other night we watched. We started with, we didn't plan on watching two, we just started with the one. We started with Reservoir Dogs, because you'd only seen it once, which is Yeah, that was only my second time crazy. seeing it. It is. I also, my first time was like two years ago, so. Wow. Yeah, I, I sat on that one for a nice long time. Well, I grew up on it. Um, I don't know, man, what did you think, coming back on it? Uh, I think it's good in the beginning. I don't think it holds up about, I don't know, like 50 or so minutes in, I think it falls apart a little bit. Wow. But uh, it's good. I don't know. It's not like classic Tarantino, I don't this think, is good. unfortunately. This is good because I completely disagree with you. I think really? that it isn't good until the end. Really? I mean, I think I the was very, very end is good. bummed no. on almost all of it up until... There's two sequences that are absolutely incredible and, and work as like modern Tarantino sequences. That, that torture sequence is great. It is, you know. It's I fucking think great. Right after the torture sequence is where it falls off. Really, yeah. I don't think it's even good up until then. Really, it's it's only good when Mister Blonde's on the on the because he's the only one that can deliver the dialogue in a way that makes sense. Right, but so you have Mister Blonde hanging out, and then he tortures, and then I think it, the whole movie just kind of falls apart. It goes way too hard into like the exposition. I don't know. It's just not really Tarantino-y after that. Yeah. I don't know about a fall apart. I I agree with you that it's not perfect, but I dude, what's his goddamn name? Who's Mr. White? Uh, God damn it! Who's the actor that's Mr. White? Which one's Mr. White? I always lose track of the colors. The the guy from Mean Streets. What the fuck is his name? And Bad Lieutenant. Oh, oh um, oh, oh, I see a blank out coming. Yeah, like I definitely uh, know his name. Shit. Ooh. All right, well, we're not going to continue if I don't know his fucking name. Um, Harvey Keitel. Okay, yes, so Harvey Keitel. Keitel. That took way too long. Keitel is horrendous in that movie. He's fucking horrendous. Really? You don't like him? I think he's terrible. Really? Well, I think that's just the way that his character's written. He's kind of written as a lame, unfortunately. Yeah, but he delivers it like a lame. Yeah. I, and that's partly he, directing, but it's also partly acting. Yeah, I mean... I think it kind of worked. I don't know. I feel like that's the way he wanted it delivered. I don't know. I could be wrong. Like, I think he wants him to come off lame. The, my issue is not lame. It's the acting. Okay. Like, the character is lame. I agree with that. But that's not my issue with him. It just feels like he's not really trying, I guess. No, he's just saying words that don't make sense. Yeah, you're kind of right. And Mr. Pink, like, that performance by Bushimi is not his fault dude he goes hard you yeah you i don't know during it you were hating on it dude i love i think it's the best part of the movie mr pink i fucking love him the whole time i i think his writing is terrible except for the first scene dude but he goes hard he does go hard i love his writing too i think he delivers it fine i don't know man i think he's a good character (laughs) he's good at parts but he's like super serial in places i just i don't know yeah, there's just a lot of, uh, I think there's a lot of tonal problems with the movie. Like There is. He just didn't figure out his writing yet, which 
is understandable yeah, seeing as it's his first feature like well i don't want to segue too early so i'll just dance with it like this is before tarantino figured out that his writing belonged in a different planet <laughs> you know what i mean yeah definitely this is when he still thought that that writing could be in the real world and everything post jackie brown is like tarantino world yeah exactly where the dialogue makes sense yeah he was before that trying to make it work in irl and it, it works for the most part in pulp fiction but i just don't think it works here this is a problematic movie I agree. I didn't expect to feel that way about it, too. I was, like, ready to be hyped on it again. Yeah, we were both um, stoked going in. Yeah. And I was pissed for, like, a while. I know. Uh, yeah, it's it doesn't it doesn't hold up the way that I remember it holding up. But, dude, uh, Michael Madsen is brilliant in it. And I, I think that, that it's a combination of his dialogue. Like, his dialogue is more, I don't know reasonable than the stuff that Mr. Pink is supposed to say. Yeah, it's true. And I don't know, he's just playing a psycho. Yeah. So I think it he works. He says less too. Yeah, exactly. He it's more acting and less delivery of these weird lines. But yeah. And it's a more of a one note character. Yeah, yeah. Uh but he's great. He he's is. absolutely great. Oh my god. Every scene he's in, he's phenomenal. He is. And that torture sequence is not only awesome in theory but that whole tracking shot where he like walks out to the car i mean i'm sure that's been spoken about before where he just like goes out of the car and the music goes away and he picks the hand of the car and comes right back in and stuck in the middle with you comes right back on and it goes right back to hell i know it's so good and like the whole time he's outside he's just like not even showing emotion he's just like walking outside sauntering like going to get this thing like no big deal it's great man it's it's the first flash of modern tarantino in that movie yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so like it does what? The movie does open with a particularly stylish. Yeah, the first scene is still modern Tarantino. You're right. Yeah, it's it great. Is. It uh, feels Pulp Fiction-y. It does. Which is tight. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that that sequence with Madsen is so good. It's just... I don't know. The, the, reference, the reference dialogue doesn't work IRL. Yeah, you're definitely right. And I would have to watch Pulp Fiction again. I think we should do that this week. Like, Pulp Fiction is that, but I feel like it does work IRL. I feel like it does too. Um, maybe it's just like it's more consistent, and that that's why it works. Like, it's just crazy all the time. I think it's less crazy. I I don't want to comment too hard on it because it's only my memory of it. That's true. We but I have seen it, it recently, and it fucking holds up. That's definitely his best movie. Yeah, I think what I think we watched it last year, and it fucking holds up, dude. It's great. Uh, but this is this is like try hard. And what's interesting, I there's that scene I laughed at. I laughed at when it happened, where they're in the car, uh, all the gangsters together, and the music cuts on, and it's like this tribal chant. <laughs> oh yeah, and it's so silly. And then the music cuts in a little later. Uh, and that was like the backdrop for the music, but that is something that he does exceptionally well now. And he was learning how to do it then. Yeah, like absolutely. cut in with bizarre music. Yeah, and then make it come in real loud and actually punctuate the drama of the scene. Right. Yeah. It, it was a little bit out of place in Reservoir Dogs, but it it was awesome. It was. But yeah, he definitely does that more now. It's just tight. He does that more, and I was commenting as it goes on, like the way he cuts it is a way that he wouldn't cut it now. Yep. Uh, he definitely stretches stuff on for exposition that didn't need to happen. Yeah, I think he's just he he just didn't cut early enough in a lot of time. It's just a lot of it's just a lack of confidence. Yeah, definitely because storytelling cutting that quick is it takes balls. It does, and now he has balls. Absolutely, and we're we're referencing there's there's a scene basically right after the torture sequence where Mr. Orange shoots Mr. Blonde. And then it's 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 between Mr. Orange and the cop, and they're he's basically telling him like, he's a cop and everything. But then they we like, all know that it's so unnecessary because then it cuts in to the actual exposition of him doing it. Like it is so unnecessary, and it's way too long. Yeah, we don't necessarily know that he's a cop yet. He could just be pissed that Blonde's a piece of shit. Yeah, but the literally cuts into him being a cop. So you're absolutely right. It should just he should have pulled that gun out, fired an entire clip into Blonde. And then it should have cut to the black screen that says Mr. Orange. Yeah. Like, that is perfect. If that happened, 
Oof. I don't know. That would be like a legendary scene if that actually it's awesome. is the way it was cut. Like it's so good until it drags out. Such yeah. a bummer. Agreed. It's uh and I think I think if Tarantino had it back, he would definitely cut it differently today. Yeah. And the ending. Uh that movie would have ended well, no. I remember thinking when it ended after that shootout it should have ended, but they needed to continue on for I guess white to die. Right. Although yeah. he didn't have to. Like they could have just all died in that scene. Yeah, there's definitely a way the to sh- make that shootout, scene the ending. The Mexican standoff. Yeah. It would have been if that if they made that the ending. Oof. Yeah, like we're nitpicking. I mean, Reservoir Dogs still good. It's just not perfect. It is. It's a good movie, but this is a way to segue into. I'm just gonna rant for a second, man. Dude, please do. Tarantino is the best that we have right now. I mean, let me backtrack just a little bit. There are like, I mean, I think Scorsese's on point right now. I think. I think Spielberg's doing great work. I think that, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there's other people, but like, I've seen a lot of movies at this point, and he was my first love, as is everybody's first love. But his shit holds up harder the more movies you see. Because right. it's still unlike anything you've ever seen. We watched Kill Bill Volume 1 afterwards, which is the most probably the most aggressive Tarantino of all of Tarantino's. And there's a couple moments that don't work. I think shortly after the scene where she gets the sword from uh, the homie, there's some stuff that doesn't work. But for the most part, it's almost perfect. It is. I And this was, what, kind of my second time seeing it? Yeah. And yeah, it's, it works, man. It's like the most Tarantino thing possible. My God. We, we have to watch Volume 2. Because I saw it... I used to think that Volume 1 was one of the best and volume two was one of the worst and then i saw it two years ago and completely overturned that so i want to know if that holds up yeah so we're gonna we're gonna pulp fiction in volume two this week yeah for sure in our ongoing quest his work is so exceptional it's just i know that 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 definitely would have been my favorite movie of the year if i were conscious in 2003 i think when it came out if i wasn't a small child you could be right. Like if that came out this year, that would definitely be the top of my list. Oh my god! Oh my god, I would tell everybody about that movie. You have to go see this fucking movie. And that was before he was. I mean, he was great because of Pulp Fiction, but I don't think we knew that he was as as aggressively Tarantino as he was because it was just dialogue before. Exactly. Yeah. But that was like the beginning of his <laughs> style. Yeah, his visual style yeah. along with his dialogue. Yeah, yeah where he kinda... started creating Tarantino worlds. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and now he has a whole trilogy, which is like his alternate version of history. Yeah. Uh, the thing, the thing about Kill Bill coming out this year and being our favorite, the it's you're saying he's the best we have, dude. Django was definitely not my favorite when it came out, which is unfortunate. It's less aggressive. Yeah. And it's aggressively wrong. We talked about not aggressively wrong, but it's just wrong. Uh, the scene where she rolls in with that pussy wagon before we find out where the pussy wagon came from yep. works way better than when that chariot or the the stagecoach rides in in Django and it's got the tooth on top. Yeah, that it, feels like a Tarantino shitty joke. Exactly. Um, yeah, it's just the I don't know the movie just didn't work the way it should have. No. I Whatever. Would, we got the Hateful Eight coming out, dude. Yeah, I would love to say that it means he's going sour, but it doesn't, dude, because Inglorious Bastards is probably the third best movie he's ever made. <laughs> yeah. Um, we should do that this week, too. Yeah. Uh, because I'm trying, I'm trying after this week for us to pick our favorites. Well, I feel pretty firm on it, man, because I know I went through, like, I had a really good friend in the Navy, and I kind of got him into film. So I, had, I like, went through all the classics again. So, you know, like, I end up seeing Memento again. And I see... So, you know, right, it's right. Like, all I all the films that it. get you into film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did all these two years ago. Okay. So that's where I have this this knowledge that, you know, I'm bringing to you now. That, like, these movies hold up. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> Kill Bill 1 is a masterpiece of Tarantino, at least. Absolutely I, exceptional. Yeah. I... I'm probably going to have to agree with that. I'm stoked for Kill Bill Volume 2, though. And I would love if Volume 2 is my favorite and Volume 1 is your favorite. Well, I don't know. Volume 1 is probably my favorite, 
but if I remember correctly, Volume 2 is just, <laughs> it's a perfectly different movie. And it just, like, takes the other side of Tarantino. Like, this is this is the aggressive visual style. Yeah. And the other, it, this is the aggressive long sequence, dialogue sequences. That is so awesome. Like, I, I awesome. wish I, yeah, like, I wish we were conscious back then and we could understand the reaction when Volume 2 came out a couple, a couple, what, months later? And everyone was like, wait, what? P- I, people would not be able to shut me the fuck up about Kill Bill in 2003, 2004 if I were 25 then. You're damn right. My Everyone God. I worked with would constantly have to hear about it. How it's the best movie I'd seen in probably ten years, man. Yeah, really. I, I'm. I, it's a bummer that they don't have one, one full movie of it. I know that the Japanese have a a whole bloody affair DVD box set, right? Which is the whole movie and oh, it's do th- the do crazy eighty eight scene without black and white. Yeah, they don't have the kill bills like well i think they have it split too but they definitely have a dvd box set that's been quote-unquote coming to america for forever oh okay um so yeah that'd be cool to have a full movie it would be an awesome epic but i'm obsessed with the way that he cuts the two of them into two completely different movies and bill's not even in the first movie i know (laughs) he's just it's just his hands and his voice right it's and it's still as charismatic as it is in the second one like (laughs) It's so good, dude. That is exceptional directing. Like, Carradine's not a good actor. He's not. <laughs> he's just not. Yeah, he's you're right. He's great in this. Yeah. Like, so what? Can we petition the Alamo Draft House to play them back to back with a short intermission in between? There's literally no reason why we aren't the people with the most political power when it comes to the Alamo right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, why don't? We, why are we not regulars? Who can right. push movies? Yeah, we should have some sway. They could play the whole bloody affair. There's no reason they couldn't do it. They could. No, they definitely. It's within their means to do they it, do and it. They it would do stuff sell like out. All the time. They'd definitely sell out immediately. They've probably already done it, to be honest. Yeah, we are a little new to Austin, I guess. Yeah. But they would absolutely be able to get the Japanese version of it and just play the whole bloody affair. God, that sounds amazing. Oh my god. I mean, we could host one in our living room. We could. I don't know how regions work with DVDs, but we could purchase the whole bloody affair. Yeah. Um, you know, I think the internet probably has it somewhere. So. It does. And that would be that would fit better in my DVD collection than the American release when it eventually comes out. <laughs> it definitely would. I had the original Jap release. <laughs> oh my God, that sounds good. Well, they did finally release Grindhouse on DVD as opposed to Death Proof versus Planet Terror. That Re- took like four years. Did it really? Uh, I thought they, they used to what come in steel books together though right well when they first were pressed they they had a steel book and a regular and i yeah. just had both steel books oh okay um and then a couple years ago they pressed it on blu-ray as a grindhouse feature with the trailers and i had it on blu-ray never opened it sold it Oof. yeah you sold a lot of gems i did uh well i started a vinyl collection so that took precedence i guess Ugh, that will that will rape your mind grindhouse money. is not a gem death proof's a gem Dude, yeah, you actually gave me the Steelbook Planet Terror, and I was it like, "The fuck am I gonna do with this? Like, it fucking sucks. Give me Death Proof. Oh my god, Death Proof is great. Yeah, it is great. I cannot wait to tell you that it's my favorite Tarantino after next week. No way. No way. I I'm, think I, I'm sure you're gonna say it, but come on now. I mean, it. If you're questioning me, like I definitely will say it. No, I know you will say it. I just I <laughs> doubt that low key you'll kind of believe it. I will take a stance. It's good though, man. It's, it's really just, good. Oh my god, I forgot how good it is until we yeah. watched it a, like what a month ago. It's really good. Well, it's like a less stylish modern version because he was still doing the style hardcore in, in Bastards and Django. Mm-hmm. But this is like old school dialogue, but with polished form. Like yeah. he just knew how to nail it. Yeah, he really does nail it. It's, and it is it's just, incredible. It's just girls talking. Yeah. It is just girls talking with this spectacular dialogue in Austin, for fuck's sake. <laughs> in Austin. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. I fucking love that movie. It's really good, man. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's going to grow on me the more I think about it yeah. all week long. Well, I'm obsessed with the first half. I think the first half is nearly perfect. I, I agree. The second half is good. Not as good as the first half. Yeah, the first half is perfect. The beginning of the second half struggles, but by the end of the second half, it comes back to being perfect again. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it struggles a little bit in between. It's just, I think I saw my first Grindhouse feature after I saw Grindhouse the movie. <laughs> and I remember thinking, 
just having a new understanding. I saw I saw Cannibal Holocaust afterwards, and I just got it after that. I was like, Tarantino made a Grindhouse film. Rodriguez made a parody of Grindhouse films. Right, right. There's just a different philosophy going into each of those films. It is, dude. Cannibal yeah. Holocaust is nice and boring. Like, nothing happens. Yep. Ever. And then occasionally some shit happens. But it's just, like, a lot of dialogue with some, like, homies hanging out. It's like, it, dude, Death Proof is a Grindhouse movie. It's awesome. And it's, it might be the best one. Write that down. The, yeah. That's, I was reading reviews on Kill Bill, and nobody was really, really saying it, but they were all kind of saying that he just, like, loves movies, and then he makes his own. Yeah. But he makes movies that are competitive in the genre. Yeah, it's it's bizarre. Like, he just apes the style real quick, and then does it better than most of the people out there. Yeah. Well, or at the, at the very least, it's, like, something that people who don't watch the movie would like. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because I don't oh, think definitely. anyone really liked, like, nobody's like, dude, that's the best samurai film ever. Nobody's exactly. Because yeah, like, I'm not over here being like, yo, I fucking love samurai films, and I watch them all the time, and Kill Bill is the best. Yeah. No, only him, but he brought it to all the people that like movies. Exactly, yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I'm sure a lot of those people have gone on to now love samurai films. Not me, but... The RZA, I guess. Ooh, Man with the Golden Fist. Did you see that one? I didn't. Oh, my God. You missed out, dude. The RZA <laughs> just great. cheeses all the time. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so good. Oh, my God. Dude, and uh, I think, what? I think Tarantino helped him out with it, actually. I have no doubt, dude. They fuck each other. Yeah. It, ooh, you should watch it, man. I guarantee you'll hate it, but it is awesome. I might skip the first, hit the second. Yeah, well, he's in the second. He gave Tarantino? up. No, no, no. Uh, RZA? The RZA's in the second. He doesn't direct or do anything else, but he's in it for some reason. I guess probably making money but wow is uh russell crowe in the second oh god i forgot that russell crowe is in the first he is dude he stars <laughs> he does <laughs> oh boy i wish i understood what happened in that meeting <laughs> and let's get russell crowe <laughs> i wish i understood how the riz's mind worked yeah dude anyway i just i'm i don't want to make this a tarantino fuck fest but i'm gonna watch a bunch more movies this week i Having seen so many movies, my opinion of him is only strengthened, and that doesn't happen with any other director. Um, I think Scorsese yeah. is making technically spectacular films now. Yeah, I think the only way it holds up is Scorsese and Kubrick. Whenever you go back and watch any yeah, of their films... Kubrick holds the fuck up. Exactly. I think both of them hold the fuck up. But other than that, you're right. Like I don't know. You mentioned Spielberg earlier. Dude, he has a lot, a lot of misses. A lot of yeah, misses. But in the last 10 years, his stuff is like... Dude, you keep you keep telling me that, but like there was War Horse, there was Lincoln. Well, I haven't seen those. There was Terminal. I'm like not, okay, dude. well I'm talking the last ten years, five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> like Minority Report. Yeah, no, Minority Report, War of the Worlds. These are like yeah. these movies are made with filmmaking from somebody who is great. Definitely, and I have a sneaking suspicion that Minority Report is fucking phenomenal, yeah. and I cannot wait until we rewatch it and and overturn that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I will be pissed if my memory of Minority Report is wrong. Yeah, but I'm not even really talking. I'm just talking about the filmmaking. Like, it, yeah, it, is, yeah. it is that of a great filmmaker. It is. And Spielberg definitely has a style, and, you know, he maintains it and all that, yada, yada, yada. No, he, he's, he's an exceptional filmmaker now. Back then, he was... Uh, he made good films, but I don't know that he was an exceptional filmmaker. Yeah, I guess sense. back then, what? There was, like, the Amblin feel to but his same, movies. But same with Scorsese. Scorsese made great movies, and he was a good filmmaker, but now he's an exceptional filmmaker. I don't know, man. That's making like, less good movies. That's just like discounting the quality of filmmaking behind Taxi Driver and Raging Bull. It's there. I guess I'm, I'm really talking about like style. Like he developed a strong style now that before he was just making great films. That's really what I'm commenting on. Yeah. Um, and hey, we can prove this soon after we're done fucking Tarantino. It might never end, man. I just like, <laughs> I was erect the entire time Kill Bill won. Well, the good news is is that it's very hard to maintain that erection because Tarantino doesn't have very many movies. So like, I know, and it's perfect. <laughs> it's so perfect. It is. Do you remember the marketing for Kill Bill? It was just marketed as the fourth film by I Quentin Tarantino. I know. No, it says that in the goddamn title scene. It's, it's so great. Dude, that actually might have been my favorite part of the movie. Ugh. This is the fourth film by Quentin Tarantino in the title scene. God damn it, it's awesome. Dude. I love it. And I'm not even a little stoked for Hateful Eight, but I mm. will see it. And, dude, there's a decent chance it's spectacular. Yeah, so, like... Glorious Bastard was spectacular. What what happened? He wrote this script for Hateful Eight. It got leaked, and he was like, uh, I guess I'll just make it a movie now. <laughs> like, 
he wasn't going to make it a movie. It was just like a script that he wrote. Yeah. And then as soon as people read it, he was like, oh, I guess I have to make it now. We'll see. I'm just like pissed on the poster. Yeah, I, I, I haven't looked at the poster. I haven't watched that footage. I just want to go into it and we'll hope pull it for up the now. best. Pull it up now. We'll pull it up live. No, you don't want to do it. You don't want to see the poster. No, I just don't want to do any of it. I just kind of want to slide into it and hope it's great. Yeah. I don't it's even, like I don't, dude, I don't Mark even know who's Tarantino. in it. Who the fuck's in it? Actually, no, Jack. don't, don't tell me. Don't tell me. I don't want to know. Hold on. Ooh, I'm going to tell you. Okay. So Roth is in it, which is awesome. Oh my God. That's okay. Uh, Sam Jack is in it, which is less awesome, but predictable. Yeah. Um, that's all I remember, but I, Tim Roth is in it. That's awesome. That is awesome. I would love if Tim Roth's career started making sense again. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think I would be indifferent if Tim Roth's career <laughs> started making sense again. <laughs> I just really, I, I really want to write like a college style paper on the trajectory of Tim Roth's career. Cause it is ridiculous. <laughs> None of it makes any sense. I can only imagine how shit my my teacher's pants would have been in film class last <laughs> year if i had written on tim ross career trajectory <laughs> and like, where we could predict he'll go <laughs> like you're given the option to write about anything you want and you write about that i'm sure your professor would have <laughs> shit their pants <laughs> he's a oh homie he used to be a film a film critic and Did we he, definitely didn't share the same views but dude he was down like he's a down homie he is Oh, you're talking about your professor. My professor. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I don't think Tim Roth did that. No. Uh, but like, what? Tim Roth like butt fucked with Herzog, and then he like butt fucked with Tarantino, and then like he just disappeared. Yeah, but he butt fucked with Tarantino before Tarantino was Tarantino. That's true. I mean, well, Paul, even at Pulp Fiction, he wasn't Tarantino yet. Right, right, right. And then as soon as he did, he just dropped off. Yeah. Ugh. Well, Tarantino probably got too big for Tim Roth. <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> All right. No one gets too big for Tim Roth. Write that one down. <laughs> Tarantino got too big for Tim Roth and just big enough for Chris Tucker. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately following. <laughs> <laughs> oh perfect <laughs> i like the way you put that oh man well i guess we should address uh this week's movie now that we're done butt fucking tarantino yeah i guess we saw a uh i guess we saw a movie this week we did we saw the gallows oh yeah we saw the gallows we didn't see minions you fuck thank god to go oh see god. the gallows I, all right first of all there is no good option here there is no good option here. And I, I would rather see the one that I'm going to hate more if I'm going to hate them both, right? Yeah. Like, what am I going to do? Go to the go to Minions and be like, uh, I didn't like it, but it's four kids. Like, I don't really have a fucking opinion. It's yeah. Not, it's not like Inside Out, like, where it can be appreciated. I would guess that it's, like, less than one note, though, like the gals was. Well, let's just roll the trailer real quick so the so the listeners know. Cue it up.
dude, we we were shitting ourselves for like three weeks up to this. We were like, dude, the cows might be good because of marketing. Just yeah, because no, of, I, I agree. But like, hey, we were suckered into TV spot marketing. Yeah, but it was good marketing, man. It was it some wasn't. of the best horror movie marketing I've seen. Yeah, no, it's the same marketing they do for actually good horror movies, which pisses me off. Yeah, we got suckered it, into it. They tricked us pretty hard. And we even knew ahead of time. I said, dude, it's like 18% of Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, we like, knew. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I was like, perfect. Don't mind if we do. Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to some like shitty movie theater, and I think every movie that night was fucking sold out. Um, so we saw the gallows. So we saw is... the gallows. We got, uh, what, we snuck in like five minutes before the kitchen closed, and we decided to get a giant fucking thing of popcorn. I had unlimited refills, so we just ate it real, 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 real quick. So we ate it too quick, but not quick enough to get a refill. <laughs> so, then, so we just got sick. The whole movie, we were just sitting there with all the shitty popcorn in our stomach for no reason. I was high as fuck, dude. Yeah, I was I, I was drunk as fuck because I, ac- I accidentally forgot to eat before I went. I had smoked with homegirl from work, and I was... Oh, and Ernest. Oh, nice. Did I tell you I smoked with Ernest? No, you didn't tell me anything, dude. You just rolled in. I smoked with Ernest. Nice. That was cool. Nice, dude. Um, yeah, so we saw the gallows. <sighs> Where to start? Um, I don't know if there is a good place to start, man. I'm just going to let you talk, because you watched the movie. I did watch the movie. It's, dude, it's not, it's not even a little bit good. And, like, all the, um... All the good parts of the trailer are at the end. And the end of the movie is actually kind of decent. Um, it's such a bummer that it took an hour and however fucking long it took to get there. Because it's not worth the journey. And there's nothing scary about it. I saw you jumping over there, dude. Dude, I, I, I could tell every yeah. time you laughed at me, you just got scared. No, no, no. All right. So, I, <laughs> I know. I was laughing at a lot of shitty parts. There was actually one part at the end that did frighten me. It was a good jump cut. I was a little concerned during, <laughs> but uh, no, man. Like in that trailer, there's a lot of like that red and black lighting that looks terrifying, and you're just pouring over there, and I'm just go on, dude, spouting I'm, bullshit. I'm, listen- I'm listening. <laughs> no, I know, but like all those things that actually look scary are at the end, and they're not scary, but they do look nice. <laughs> it's just a bummer that I saw them all in the trailer. I'm just mad that I got suckered, like. This movie is not more than what I thought. Well, it's just not more than every other horror movie that comes out. And I don't watch those. Yeah, I, so, I don't go to the theater to watch shitty horror movies. If you want me to say what I could, what what has been said a thousand times about modern horror movies, it's a bunch of stupid kids doing stupid stuff. Which is which is fine if it's well written and like I'm okay yeah, with stupid kids doing stupid shit. They're not doing stupid shit. Like when, okay, yeah, they when wouldn't he's fucking on that ladder trying yeah, to get yeah. the fucking air ducts. They wouldn't be dealing with screaming shit like idiots. from afar. Yeah, like oh my god, you're gonna fall. I have I have absolutely had people go up on ladders and you hold it, you stupid fuck. Yeah, yeah. So so dumb. Yeah, they're just idiots, and I am very tired of seeing that character. They're not idiots. That's not even an idiot move. It's just unrealistic. That's not. I'm right. an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to get on a ladder. Right, right. But so I that's know. that's why I hold it. Yeah, like, I know that I'm going to hold it. Like, yeah, you're right. Ugh. I don't know. It's, it's shitty all around. But, all right, no. At the end, it actually does get kind of good for found footage. Like, they utilize the found footage in a kind of cool way because the batteries are dying. And, like, so the, the picture's coming in and out at the very end. Yeah. And it is actually done kind of well. And that's why I wanted to stay to the end because... It, I had heard that it, you know, it's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, it's not worth watching it. Towards the end, I turned and asked you uh, if I could leave, and your response was, "You're such a piece of shit." Yeah, I was in time. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was pretty mad because <laughs> you were I was pissed. like, I was so mad because I yes, shut up. I was like, oh my god, I'm sorry. Yeah, because like if you had left without seeing the kind of cool ending, then you could have commented on the movie without fucking seeing it. You piece of shit. Yeah, it's a one-note shitty horror movie. All right, perfect. So I guess I win this round, right? That's what that's what this means. Uh, yeah. Because I, I was thinking in my head, I was like, well, the last time that I left you in a the movie theater, it never made the cast, so it wasn't really worth doing. Exactly. We spent a bunch of money trying to see Mad Max, and it never, never casted about but it. But in this case, if I just literally got up to go to the bathroom and then left and went home, it would have made the cast. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. 
And it would have been better. Yeah. Because then you could have yelled about me le- just literally leaving you in the movie theater. I could have. And I could have uh, I could have lied about how good the ending was. I could have been like, did you just miss the best ending of any horror movie this year? Well, I, I did like the very ending. I yeah, The very ending is, it's it's like actually good. Like, I feel good to stretch, man. I just, yeah. I, it's, it's, it's goodish. It might be really good because like we just sat through idea. shit. It's a good plot idea. It's a good, it's a good plot idea. And I think it was executed pretty well. Yeah. Uh, like they actually utilized the found footage aspect and it's always cool. Like maybe if this was in one of those VHS movies and it was a 15 or 20 minute movie and it ended like that, I could be cool. Ooh. I know you keep bringing up VHS as if that's actually a good movie. It's not, but like it is a way of expressing ideas and trying things out, I now, guess. VHS 2? Oh my God. Here we go again. You're going to tell me that VHS 2 is better than VHS 1. No, I would never say that. I would say that that one sequence in VHS 2 that is really, really long, like truly an epic within that movie. Yeah. And well, you're talking about the compound one, right? I don't know. The like, Asian one? Yeah, yeah. The cult compound My thing. My God. That is the most aggressively absurd thing I've seen in a horror movie ever. And I <laughs> it love is. it. I yeah. love it. It's kind of great. Ooh, I just spilled wine all over myself. That's oh my popcorn God. hangovers first, guys. Ooh, good thing it wasn't red. Am I right? Ooh. Well, I'm going to be sugary in a second. <laughs> so I'm, I was sitting here. Let, let me get a wipe down around here. <laughs> Red man. Uh, so I was sitting here and I was like, I got myself ready. I had my uh, my coffee cup full of wine. Yeah. Uh, so I finished that. And then I had a half drank beer from last night that I had queued up. Yeah. And then. Queued up. <laughs> so that I was ready for when I ran out of those things, I. I popped the cap off another beer, and it's just been sitting next to me this whole time, getting warm for when I need it. When do you think you're going to need it? Um, in like T minus two minutes, because this Tecate is Tecate is about finished. So I guess just just a general consensus on the gallows: don't fucking see it. Don't fucking see it, and when it eventually streams on Netflix, I know you're going to watch it. Don't see it. Then don't either. see it then either. Ugh. And when I, you're at your friend's house and they're like, let's rent a movie, and they'll be like, let's go to Blockbuster and get the Gallows <laughs> if it's 2003. <laughs> let's go to Blockbuster <laughs> don't and see get the Gallows. Piece of shit. Dude, don't, don't let anyone see it. Really. It sucks. Ugh, I'm so bummed that, like, I'm just tired of supporting. By supporting, I mean spending money on bullshit fucking horror movies. Like, I am. I am part of the problem. We're both part of the problem right now. I'm not. I don't see any of them. I saw the gals for a cast. Yeah. No. But like, we still paid for it. What we should have done was, I didn't think we should have bought a ticket for a good movie, which I did. What? What did what we go options see? Do we have? I don't know. But I bought. I bought a ticket for Dope when we went to go see Ted Two. <laughs> so I'm definitely not part of the problem. Well, usually, if, if, if we're framing it on this conversation then, yeah, I could have bought a ticket for Ted 2 and seen The Gallows, and then I would have purchased a ticket for a good movie and seen t- and seen The Gallows. Ooh, I like, I like the way you put that. Ted 2 is a good movie. In comparison to Gallows, absolutely. Yeah, in comparison, you're right. The Gallows is a solid two-star movie that is never worth watching again and not worth watching the first time. It's a one-star. Ooh, no, but the one-star. Star yeah, yeah. two-star is the worst, dude. One-star star has some replay value. Yeah. Like, like, times are about to get harsh, you know? Harsh Times is a one-star film. And it's awesome to watch on the regular. Harsh Times is a one-star film. So don't see The Gallows. Stream Harsh Times on Netflix instead. And every time Christian Bale gets real serious and says times are about to get harsh, well, he doesn't take a say shot. It. Just make sure that you say it. <laughs> Just make, make sure you look at the person next to you and let them know that you know that times are going to get harsh it's, real soon. It's the least descriptive title for a movie ever. <laughs> times literally never get harsh in that movie. <laughs> they don't. It's, it's just all flowers. It's kind of just homies hanging out and thinking times might get harsh. Oh, Ugh. man. It's great. Yeah. Yo, after this cast, we should, uh, we should pop these teas off and watch Harsh Times together. My teas not off, but my peas are off. Ooh. I don't know how I feel about that because my tea is already off, but I keep my peas on. <laughs> so uh, I guess, I don't know, man. I don't know if we've even talked about True Detective on the cast yet. We've definitely talked about it in recordings. I don't think it's made the cast yet. Yeah, I think we accidentally spoil shit way too often. So allow me to just put my consensus on recording for right now. I love True Detective. I love True Detective. I have problems with the new season. I have problems with the old season. 
Yeah. But overall, I love it. Uh, and I'm getting increasingly bummed on the new season. Really? Uh, but I'm increasingly bummed on the old season, too. So yeah, I it's think, just problematic. I, I think, think you perfect. just get bummed on things. Like, that don't, is don't, absolutely possible. Don't be so bummed, dude. Don't be so bummed. <laughs> uh, it's really good. I just, I bummed on his writing, man. I know, which is bizarre. Dude, that is what I love yeah, about True Detective. Dialogue. Dude, I, every I love single dialogue. scene with fucking homeboy Vince Vaughn is terrible. I don't know it's what you terrible. mean. It's so good. Oh, my God. He's so bad in it. That is, what? All right. I just, like, wildly disagree. I He's love the dialogue. so bad. I love the acting. It's so good. Everything else works pretty well, but he's so bad. I don't, I don't know what it's, you're saying. It's really he, a writing issue, I no, think, no, no. more than anything else. Uh, yeah, you have a problem with the way he writes dialogue, and I fucking love it. It's not supposed to be real life. It's supposed to be true detective. Like, No, I know. I just hate it. Yeah, so you know that and still hate it, which doesn't make any sense to me. I'm hyped on Vince Vaughn as a character. I knew I knew he was going to pull off this performance, and I think he is. He's so serial. He's, perf- he's pulling off the performance for this writing. Yeah, it's awesome. That is what I wanted out of him, and he's doing it to the T. Terrible. Ugh. One of these days, I'm going to understand why you're so bummed on the dialogue that Pizzolotto writes. Yeah, I just... He just writes ridiculous dialogue in a very serial show. Yeah, that's... That is... That is perfect. Like, that's why I like it. It's kind of like my same issue. I mean, we just spoke about this with Reservoir Dogs. I... I just... I mean, it, it can work. It absolutely can work. The, the dialogue is ridiculous in Pulp Fiction, and it works. But yeah, it's because, I guess, in Pulp Fiction, they're not being as serial as they are in Reservoir Dogs. Dude, it's so super serial in True Detective. I know. I, that's why I love it. I'm trying to be super serial all the time and spew bullshit out of my mouth at the same time. Oh, my God. And he just uses metaphors in real life. I like, know. As if people do that. Yeah, that's why I like it. One it's of these, one of these days, she'll come around. Actually, no, you probably never will. It's just no. not for you. Yeah, I mean, I don't hate it. I, I do like it. I just... Yeah. It's just, I think it's close to being truly great, not even television, just like film. I think it's it's, tr- it's so close to being great film, and it's just not. It is... Because of the dialogue. The dialogue is aggressively for me, so I'll never understand why you don't like it. Uh, I would say that it is truly great, great film. Even in season one... With Matthew McConaughey, he just needs to restrain it a little bit. A little bit. I, but I don't think Vince Vaughn could be restraining it. Yeah, Matthew McConaughey could have restrained a little bit, but Vince Vaughn, I just think you, well, you're just having no, a problem with it's the dialogue. A dialogue. Yeah, it's yeah. absolutely no. Vince Vaughn's 100 percent restrained. Not the yeah. same performance at all. Yeah, like Vince Vaughn's performance is great. It is, but it's just like he'll just like stare at the camera. And start talking in metaphors. I know that's all I've ever wanted. <laughs> like okay. every the, the, all of your criticisms are just like things that I want well, out of everything. We have literally nothing to argue about then, because that's fine. If that's what you like, then he does nail that. I don't disagree with that. Yeah, like that is why I, I love just that don't show. Like that. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, he's good in it. I really think if he had been written better, he would be great, and I want him to be great. Uh. Everyone else works pretty well. I wish it were a little less serial all the time, but that is just true detective as the whole. Yeah. And that's what you Super get. Super serial constantly. Every single scene is its own individual bummer. <laughs> that's a good way to put it. <laughs> Dude, I think, all right, the more we talk about it, the more I realize that true detective is the perfect thing for me. Dude, it's good, man. Yeah. Uh, it is. And I've even, dude, uh, yeah, I've even gotten down with, the way that Lynn has been directing those overhead shots these days. I think they're working better. Or maybe I've just got more used to them. I just wish that they would focus on... I can't remember any names today. What the fuck? Colin Farrell, like they focused on Matthew McConaughey in season one. Yeah. Um, I just want I, more I, on him. Yeah, I guess that's what people were concerned about with the expanded cast. Um, that's fair. Um Expand the cast. That's fine. And tell other stories. Right. But I just think that there's one great character whose story needs to be dissected. It's true. I mean, we're only halfway through. We're only halfway through the season. So maybe we just don't get as much time each episode. But maybe by the end, we will get what we want out of the Colin Farrell exposition. Yeah. 
he's spectacular and spectacularly written. Like yeah. the writing is not bad. The dialogue is the issue. Yeah. Well, For so me. Colin Farrell doesn't have that weird dialogue no, that you're doesn't. not he's about. great in it yeah yeah so he's like great. he's the perfect Lalo's character great. for you i just hate the metaphors and really essentially everything matthew mcconaughey said in the first season <laughs> <laughs> and i love essentially every fucking line he I, said in the first it's season. funny like i'm down to like rep the lines but i just don't think it's great writing yeah i um i think we're just gonna have to settle this with I disagree with you. Yeah, I'm and not even mad about this disagreement. Like, yeah, like yeah. there's just no way just to come agree, to any. Literally agree to disagree on this. Exactly, and weirdly enough, I'm also okay with that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so True Detective is. I was stoked at the jump, thinking that it could possibly be better than the first season. Yeah. Uh, I don't know that I think that so much anymore. I'm getting a little concerned. It's still good. Uh. Well, yeah, obviously we got to wait it out and see. What I'm interested in is that fucking ending for episode four. Yeah. Like how, all right, this is just something that I cannot fathom. I've been thinking about it for a couple of days now. Where the fuck does HBO get all their goddamn money from? Because the ending to that se- the, the, to that episode, how much money did that fucking cost them? Oh my God. I don't know. It's a massive shootout. True. It, there's no way that costs more money than almost any scene in Game of Thrones, though. Agreed. I guess. But, like, the thing is, is, like, that was a massive shootout, and that might be one of the best shootouts I've ever seen awesome. put onto film. I don't even like shootouts, and it worked really Yeah. Well. Like, I remember, all right, I guess the last good shootout that I really, really, really liked um, was in The Kingdom, when they get ambushed. Uh, I think that's a phenomenal shootout. I don't want to talk about that movie, because it's not good, but a great shootout and dude how the fuck does true detective like we would never be talking about this years ago that a tv show has a on par for million dollar movie like it's true it's just it's stunning the production that goes into hbo shows these days i guess is my point it's not even just that it's like it it's not even yeah you're right we would not have that conversation then but it's not even a question now we're not even like making bold claims and saying that it's on par with Hollywood. It just is. Everyone just knows that. Yeah, it's not even, it's not up for discussion. It just is the new norm, which is bizarre. True Detective is competitive, period. Yeah, and I love, I love that HBO put it in uh, contention for best television show instead of best miniseries last year because they have faith in this shit. Yeah. It's awesome. It's and show, man. for the record, fucking Breaking Bad beating True Detective season one? Ugh. Wait, was that Bre- that was Breaking Bad season five part two? Yeah, that was good though. It was good. It's just like you know, it was the only good part of Breaking Bad, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So this shootout. Yeah. It was nuts, man. It was a massive the scale thus far. It's the perfect bummer because every single scene in True Detective ends on a bummer, especially yep. this season. Yep. And it, this literally ends on a bummer, like. A particular dude. There's bodies everywhere, like is, dude, innocent bodies everywhere. Oh my god! Can you imagine if that shoot ha- shootout happened? Like it'd be massive. Oh my god! It oh, it's so good. I like can't stop thinking about it. Well, I think what we can both agree on here is that if you're listening to this and you don't know what we're talking about, then you're probably wrong, man. Yeah, Seriously, like you are missing out on must see television. And I don't love it, and I don't love every scene. I hate a lot about it, but you're just. Dude, you are missing out on something that needs to be seen if you're missing True Detective on a week-to-week basis. It doesn't make any sense to me, the type of person who wouldn't be watching True Detective. Like, what are you doing with your life? Well, I mean, okay, here's what they're doing. They're either not interested, in which case they're not listening to this, or they're trying to binge, in which case I totally understand. I definitely understand with that because I love the binge. Yeah, and it's frustrating watching it week-to-week. It really is. But regardless, I I am going to say... You need to be watching True Detective. Even if you don't like it, it's a lesson in film. It is. Constantly. And we don't we don't even have a great director this season, and it's still a lesson in fucking film. It's good, man. It's uh As good as Game of Thrones is now, it it's just not this is truly the most competitive thing HBO has put out. I agree. Uh The Wire is great writing, but it's not great filmmaking like this is. Yeah, well, it's different filmmaking. Yeah. 
I don't know that it's great filmmaking though. Yeah, it's more. I don't know. I guess it's more it's the best writing I've probably ever seen in my life. Definitely. Uh, Definitely. Like as much as I am enraptured with Game of Thrones, like yeah, I think True Detective is a better example of what television can offer the world. Yeah. Well, I think we're just both captivated by the world that Game of Thrones is. Exactly. Yeah, we're just caught up in it. Yeah. Speaking of which, that uh, that 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 beer that I opened earlier. Yeah. Just got just got sipped yeah, on. Just got it chugged. <laughs> you could say I just chugged on it a little bit. <laughs> All right, man. I think. I mean, I think that's it, dude. Like, that's all. We did. We spoke on Kill Bill. We spoke on ugh, the Gallows, <laughs> and we spoke on True Detective. Uh, so you already know, people. You can find us on Twitter at Popcorn Hate. <laughs> probably the best Twitter name possible. It is uh, probably the best Twitter name possible. We hate movies. Listen to our podcast. <laughs> You'll probably hate it. <laughs> it's perfect. Oh man, I guess we'll be back next week. What are we doing? Uh, ooh, oh yeah. So we just dispute. Yeah. So we just found out that Ant Man is next. Well, we knew Ant Man's last week, and I I think I said a couple days ago, if I have to fucking watch Ant Man for the cast, I'm going to kill myself. Luckily, I just found out the train wreck opens this week. I am an Apatow aficionado yeah and That's this might lie. be I his like return to form no it's not it's not it might not be is what it, all right i, I don't need to less, hate there's less evidence towards it being returned to form than there is i don't need like the pre-movie hate all right also it has lebron james playing lebron james yeah so it could be a return to form well we will to be decided what we cast on next week. <laughs> There's a dispute to be had over that oh one. Oh my god. If you make me go see the Ant-Man, I, I will also go see Trainwreck because I'm not okay with seeing fucking Ant-Man. Ant-Man might be great, dude. Oh my god. In no world is Ant-Man great. <laughs> In no world. Like, I don't care who you are. Alright. Alright. I don't have time for all this hate. Just follow us on fucking Twitter, at PopcornHate. Uh, and god damn it. We'll see you next week, man. I just got to start drinking. Yeah, I got to go finish this beer. Ugh.